So recently on my channel, I have been getting a lot of questions about read alouds. What are they? Where do you find books that are safe? Should read alouds be decodable? Or is the kid reading aloud? Am I reading aloud? How do you decide which read alouds you should actually do with your kids and which books you should just assign to them to read on their own? How can I be more consistent with read alouds? And how do I do read alouds with young children who do not want to sit still or don't seem to understand what I'm reading? We're gonna cover all of that today, so let's get started. Let's first start with what is a read aloud? Well, each family, it might look a little bit different, but in our home, read aloud time is a time when I am the mom am reading aloud to my kids. Now, sometimes we will do audiobooks. We'll get more to that here in just a second, but this is a time when we are listening to a book all together as a family that is either being done on audiobook or I am personally the one reading it. Does that mean you can't have your kids involved in read aloud time as far as them doing some of the reading? Not at all. You can choose what works best for you and your family. Maybe you have older children and you're gonna pass the book around and let them read just a few pages or a chapter. Maybe you wanna have your child have their own personal copy and have them jump in and read a few sections. But in our home, we prefer to keep this as a time where they're working on those listening comprehension skills and they don't have to worry about adding in reading skills in there as well. And part of that goes to our next question. Should the read alouds that I choose be decodable to my child? Should they be at their reading level? So for us, because I am the primary one doing the read alouds, the answer is no, they do not need to be decodable. I actually prefer for them to be a couple of levels above my children's reading level because that is usually something that cognitively they are totally able to keep up with. They can be engaged, they can comprehend, they can understand, but maybe it's something that is not accessible to them because of the reading level. I wanna entice them. I want to give them that little carrot that encourages them to keep growing and learning in their reading skills so that they can get to more books like this. I also want those opportunities for further conversation. So I'm going to choose books personally that are a little bit harder than what my kids can actually read themselves. But how do I find ones that are safe for my kids? It is hard as a parent. We can't pre-read everything out there. So what are some trusted resources that we can go to and find good book recommendations for? So I have a few I want to share with you guys today. The first one is Honey for a Child's Heart. This is a book. It's a great investment to purchase. It's not that expensive and it gives you read aloud ideas or just reader ideas for your kids from pre-K like early ages all the way up to high school. It's got a nice little checklist. It's got a place for you to write notes. So you're able to go through and pick different books for your children. I also recommend Sarah McKenzie's Read Aloud Revival website. I will link all of this down below for you guys, but she has a whole list of books. She has picture books, she has chapter books. She has good books for boys, good books for girls. She has books on different holidays, books on different seasons. So there's lots of ways that you can find these great resources. One of my personal ways that I have really been enjoying is actually by asking other friends, asking other people who I trust, who I know are like-minded in their values. And I've been able to do that in Made Homeschool. It's an online community created by homeschool moms for homeschool moms. I am in there. I would love for you to be in there, but I personally went in recently and asked ideas of books that I could have my kids read before they graduate high school. At this point, we're kind of looking, we're in our last four or five years of school, which is absolutely terrifying to me, but it's also exciting. And I wanna make sure there are not good quality books that I'm missing here that I want them to read. So I went and I asked these moms that I love and I trust. And I'm like, what do you guys think? What do you recommend? I got so many great recommendations and added them to my list. So asking a friend, being able to get personal recommendations is always another good resource. But here's another great question that came up in the made to homeschool community that I thought was brilliant because up until this year, I have not struggled with this as much, but that is which books do I choose to do read alouds and which ones do I assign reading? So in the younger years, because I've always gone up a couple of levels, this has not been too difficult. If it was above my child's reading level, it looked interesting to me and maybe fit with the time period in history that we were reading, I would select that and that would be our read aloud and I would assign them readers that were more at their level. However, now that I have middle schoolers, they're able to read most things. And I can't necessarily pick like higher level high school books to read as an entire family. So that is kind of something I've had to wrestle with this year in trying to decide exactly how do I pick books for my kids when reading level is really not an issue. So there are a couple of factors. First thing is I think about who is my audience? Am I reading this aloud to 
all of my kids? Am I reading them to just my older kids? Because I might pick something that has more intense or heavier topics if it's just a few of us of the older ones. But if it's the whole family, I'm gonna wanna keep that in mind as well. I might opt for a little bit more lighthearted or a little bit less heavy topic, or at bare minimum, I'm going to make sure that I alternate heavier and light topics in books so that we're not getting too down in the weeds with younger kids. Also, which ones do I choose? Sometimes I make a list of the books that I want them to read this year and I pick the ones that seem most interesting to me. Maybe that's wrong. I don't know. Does anybody else do that? But I'm like, ooh, I really want to be able to read this book with them. So I choose that one. I also like to pick ones that I do think would be a little bit heavier topics or have more teachable moments because it gives me the opportunity to talk it through with my kids. Now, again, I might have a separate time for my older kids, just depending on how heavy the topic is. But a great example of this is Carry On Mr. Bodewich. We read that one this past year. I could have easily assigned it to my middle schoolers. They would have been just fine reading it, but I do not think they would have fallen in love with this book to the level that they did if we had not done it as a group because there were so many teachable moments within the book that led to all of these great discussions. So oftentimes I will just try to kind of, again, listen to personal recommendations, read the recaps of books, kind of read some of the reviews on different books out there and see which ones might lead to the best discussions. And those are the ones that I will choose to do for read aloud versus the ones I choose to assign. Another question I get asked often is how am I supposed to be more consistent with read alouds? I understand the value. I want to incorporate this in my home, but we just cannot seem to keep the consistency. The first thing I would say is maybe adjust expectations. Is the idea of consistency in your mind that you have to do it every single day? Because if that's the case, maybe simply adjusting those expectations. If you're new to doing read alouds, if you're trying to build in this habit, maybe only doing it a couple of days a week, maybe shooting for every day, but if, as long as you hit two or three days, you're fine. There are lots of options. There's no right or wrong answer whatsoever, but I would recommend attaching it to a current anchor in your day, something that's gonna happen no matter what. So for instance, it could be car time. If you're a family that's on the go regularly and you're struggling to get that read aloud time in because you're always rushing off to piano or sports or therapy or whatever it is, utilize that drive time to listen to audiobooks. We always have a physical book that we're reading aloud and then oftentimes have an audiobook we're doing as well when we're in the car. So we're able to get to twice as many read alouds because of that, but you could just do read alouds in the car if you want to. You can also attach it to meal times. Breakfast or lunch or even dinner is a great way to take advantage of that time to just read while the kids are eating because oftentimes their hands and their mouths are busy and so they're able to listen better. Or it could be attaching it to bedtime and reading a chapter before bed. Sometimes waiting until daddy is home can be a huge help because then you have an extra set of hands who can help wrangle kids or help with the crowd control issues. Speaking of crowd control, how do you handle those little ones who are constantly wiggling and seem like they're not listening? Well, a couple of things. First, come to your read aloud time with enthusiasm and excitement. Your kids can read off of your body language. If you are dreading this time because you're already expecting it to go wrong, they're going to match that level of energy. So come with it with excitement. Talk about all day or leading up to that time. Oh, we're gonna do our read aloud time. I can't wait for us to do our read aloud time. Also adjust expectations. If you have not established the routine of a read aloud time, understand that at least at the beginning, it might be more about the training opportunity than it is about the story. So maybe don't pick your favorite childhood story to start out with. Maybe pick simple picture books to start out with as you establish that routine. Start small, start short, leave your kids wanting more. I know it can be tempting to want to just go on chapter after chapter, especially if they're not all falling apart at that point, but it's better to leave them excited and wanting more than it is to just keep it going until everyone hits that meltdown point. Keeping hands busy is always good and not expecting your kids to sit perfectly still during read aloud time. My kids are oftentimes wiggling around or even moving. My rule, as long as they are not actually being noisy and as long as they are not being super distracting, like going up and like poking another sibling or something like that. I don't mind if they bring toys and they come and listen. We have a basket of fidgets available to them if they want to utilize those during read aloud time. You can do things like Legos or Play-Doh. 
These are great ways to keep their hands busy and have them listen. Now, I know some of you have asked, but what if you feel like they're not actually retaining anything? I would say first assess how hard are our books. Maybe we need to go down a level or two, start with something a little bit smaller or shorten our time just a little bit, but it's okay. You're right now, you're building that habit with your kids. You can also, as they get older, ask them for oral narration, asking them to tell you what they heard, but until they are old enough to do that, you can also kind of mimic that for them. So you might read a paragraph or a chapter and then summarize it for your kids as you go through that process and they will start to learn those skills. A bonus tip for you guys is we always love to read the first book in a series. If I think it's a series that might entice my kids, but they're not naturally picking it up on their own, we will read the first book in the series and then I will let them know if they want to continue the series, they can either do so on audiobook depending on their age level or that they can continue in that with a physical book. This has worked beautifully as we've introduced our kids to the Wizard of Oz series, as we've done the Chronicles of Narnia, as we've done Boxcar Children, My Father's Dragon, and more. So if you're looking for ways to interest your kids in read alouds more or in personal reading themselves, I would recommend trying that method. If you want to know more about the read alouds we have coming up for next year, be sure to subscribe because I'll have a video coming out on that very, very soon. In the meantime, check out this video here to see which were the best and worst read alouds of this year for our family. Bye!